This is wild. I'm holding the laser engraver in the air against an object while I'm engraving it. <laughs> I did it upside down. <laughs> I love tools. Old tools, new tools, hand tools, advanced tools. I'm up for it all. I love what tools help me create, and I'm always excited to try something new. Every tool I'm introduced to is an opportunity to create something I never have before. Maybe the tool will improve the quality of my work, or enable me to be more precise. It could increase the speed I finish a project, or it might make it possible to do something I could not have achieved without it. So when our good partner Xtool reached out to us and asked if we'd be willing to take a look at their Xtool F1 portable laser engraver, I said yes almost immediately. I thought it would be a great chance to share an interesting tool with all of you. So if you'll indulge me, let's try a few things with this machine and see what's possible. All right, I think we tried this out. Let's take a simple piece of uh, two millimeter blast wood. We can set this down on the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and use, well, let's, let's try and engrave our, uh, our Fat Bantha logo. Inside Xtool's Creative Space software, I can drop in our Fat Bantha beer logo and set it to engrave. One of the cool features about the F1 is this framing option here. When I select it, the machine will show me an outline of the outer frame. I can also set this to outline the artwork itself and to give me a more precise location of where the cut or the engraving on the material was gonna be. So we have our material selected, our engrave and cut settings. Now we can go ahead and process the project and see what happens. Okay, we're gonna pop this out of the F1 here. Got a nice clean cut through. Left a little residual on that from, for the bug bulb, wiped that off pretty easily. It's interesting because uh, it's sort of tapered. You know, unlike a traditional laser cutter that moves back and forth on a gantry, this, the laser is actually being reflected off multiple mirrors in there. So the sides of it, as the laser comes down, is actually cutting this with a slight taper to it. Not a big deal for something like this, but if you were using this with parts and pieces that were gonna line up next to each other, it'd be something to consider. But what am I so excited about here is the engraving process. Engraving like this on a traditional laser cutter on one of my CO2s would probably take close to about five to six minutes. And this did it under two minutes, start to finish. That's pretty dang impressive. I could see using this machine for doing a lot of the engraving process. I'm really excited about the possibility of engraving on different materials. This is a slate uh, piece of coaster that they sent along in their care package kit with a bunch of other pieces. And I'm just really curious to test this out and to uh, drop some designs in here and get some, uh, get some engravings on some things I've never done before. Oh, that's cool. That is pretty slick. I love the way that turned out. I never really think about doing these kinds of projects, but man, that is a lot of fun and you could do so many different things with it. That really turned out well. And it's so fast. That was at about two and a half minutes total. Yeah, that's pretty quick work for a laser engraver. This is one of those days where I was able to take a variety of materials shared by Xtool with the engraver and try out all kinds of different engravings. We have this cool Death Star plan graphic that we drew up in Illustrator. I experimented with that on multiple metallic business cards that were in the kit. That simple design on those metallic cards really turned out well. I could see using these in some of the upcoming projects that we have. I wanna test this cutting out. So I'm using this chipboard. It's basically a heavy cardboard for scrapbooking and stuff, but it works really cool for model making. And I also noticed that I kind of screwed up here. I got a little overexcited yesterday. And you can see that I've got this mark all the way around. I forgot to use this piece that they send with the machine. And this is, you use this when you're cutting so that you don't ruin the bottom. Anyway, I ruined the bottom. 
Now this chipboard is very inexpensive material and I've been experimenting with it a lot. I saw it in use with model making on a channel called Gamey Builds, which if you've never checked out, you need to for sure. The thing about this material is it's easy to cut, glue, paint, and so on. It's also great for running tests on larger projects that maybe you wanna use something like acrylic, but you wanna test all of your cuts and your fits ahead of time. All in all, this little machine worked really well on the chipboard. I had to dial in a few settings here and there, but I can definitely see the possibilities. Wanted to run a few more tests, so I tried out a couple other engraving files. These came from a website, LaserPix. What's really neat about it, though, is the machine itself, if you engrave at different levels, you can get a really cool depth of of image engraved on there. I thought these were pretty sweet. So try it out one file that I've had for a lot of years. There you go, you can kind of see. it's uh, It's been around for a lot of years. It's an Aztec calendar, a Star Wars Aztec calendar file. I wanted to see what I could get it, how small I could get it and how good the detail was. Let me see if I can get it up really close for you. As you can see, it I mean, it does a really good job of getting that detail. I'm pretty stoked with how well it's, this machine functions. Now, the last aspect I wanted to try today is the fact that this bottom here comes out. This bottom plate's removable. And what you can actually do is hold it up to items and engrave through this space. And as you can see right here, we'll zoom in. The, the little dots here, you've got a blue dot and a red dot. So that's the blue dot laser and the IR. And as you raise and lower, that's how you focus it in. And so as you turn it clockwise or counterclockwise, you raise and lower the aperture to get those dots to overlap each other. And now we can load up a file and hold this against something. Now, according to the promotional videos, I should be able to take this guy with the handle here and hold it at 90 degrees or even at an angle on an object. There's kind of rubber gripping along the bottom, so that should help me hold it. So I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna laser engrave our logo on our Omtech laser machine. <laughs> this is wild. I'm holding the laser engraver in the air against something to engrave it. It worked. It's just freaking upside down. <laughs> Okay, other than my stupidity of not flipping the logo around the right direction before engraving, I'd call it a success. It's not a heavy machine, but holding it for a long period of time at a 90 degree angle and engraving is probably not the most realistic use of it. If you just scored the outside, it would have been done in no time. That took about four and a half minutes or so, which isn't a horrible amount of time to hold it against there, but maybe not super practical but I can see holding it up to other objects, we are gonna do a quick score around it, and we might have to try that. So what's the conclusion when it comes to the X-Tool F1? My opinion, this machine is awesome. It has very specific use cases for sure, but I can see so many possibilities. I didn't even mention the air purifier that I'm currently using with the F1, which works so well, I was blown away. You could use this machine at the kitchen table without any concern of smoke or fumes. In just a few days of testing, I've been able to generate some great projects. With how portable this machine is, can you imagine what you could do at Comic-Cons or craft fairs? I haven't even mentioned or shown you the rotary tool or the slide extension, but we will very soon. We have links in the description for the X-Tool F1, as well as other accessories and laser cutters that they provide at X-Tool. So if you're in the market, take a look at the links and see what works for you. We'd also really like to know what you think about this kind of content on the channel. Would you like to see more interaction with different materials, tools, tips, and techniques? Because we can filter that into our regular build projects. Totally up to you, and we'd love your feedback. In the meantime, if you want to see another project build, take a look at this one right here, and we're going to see you back here really soon the next time we build something out of nothing.